Hello and welcome to the Voluntary Virtues Network. I am your host, the Mr. Ancap, and this is my show, The State Sucks. Today's topic on education. Now, this one was brought to us by a viewer from last week's episode who gave me this idea, and as I said last week on my video, Healthcare Regulations. Uh, I'm running out of ideas, so please, in the comment section, let me know what you guys want me to talk about in future videos. Now, to preface this video, uh, education is a big topic, and I gave it a thorough looking over. You know, a multi-generational approach to find out how we got to the messed up situation we have today. And in order to relay this information to you, to draw and paint an accurate picture of our situation, how we got here, what's up with it, I am going to need to use some generalities to talk about some, some groups as broad brushes, not adhering to every exception to the rule. So please, if you say, if you listen to me and you're like, you know, um, you know, oh, I know the exception to that rule, blah, 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 I get it, I know I'm here for you. But, you know, in order for the, or for the sake of time and precision, we're just going to have to move with it. All right, I think you're going to understand what I'm getting into as we go on. So what's the current problem with education? Well, I mean, it just, there doesn't seem to be a point to it. Right? We've completely saturated the market with degrees. We seem to be raising kids in public school just to send them off to university for no other purpose than to come out with loads of debt and nothing to do with their degree. Right? I mean, the modern era is simply that, you know, you go to college at 18, graduate at, like, at earliest, what, 22, 23, and you gotta wait till, like, 30, 35, maybe 40 to actually start making money on that degree. Until then, you're working at places like Walmart or, or, or as a, uh, as a McDonald's employee, right? The same job you would have had had you not wasted the time and money on a degree you can't currently use. So how did this happen? Like, who's to blame? What's going on? Well, first off, let's point out that the one of the culprits, the main culprit, is the state. The state is the foundation of all evil, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry to break that to you. Um, screw the ruling class. Non-aggression principle all the way. But... The state uh, doesn't work in a vacuum. It has its lovely statists, its followers, based on their own malice or their own ignorance about the world. So I, what society led us to this point? Like, what, what people do we hold up in the streets and be like, why did you condemn us to this intellectual wasteland of an educational system? Well, we need to start with the World War II generation, also known as the Greatest Generation. Now, what's up with this generation? Well, they have some pretty high marks to their name. They came out on the bottom, real rags to riches story. Uh, born a little before or during the Great Depression, they go on to fight World War II, um, <clears throat> and then proceed to build the middle class, build suburbia, build schools, save kittens and trees, pass the Civil Rights Act, and bow out by putting a man on the moon. Pretty top-notch scores. And I want to add something to that list that doesn't usually get added. The Greatest Generation also brought about the atomic bomb, which, you know, the nuclear bomb, all that shit, right, the, the, the WMDs, and that was probably one of the best contributions to mankind ever, I know everyone's a little apprehensive of nuclear weapons, oh my god, they're so dangerous, that's the point, mutually assured destruction is what prevents warfare from being so prevalent between the modern age superpowers, I can do a whole video on that, I just want to throw it out, that, that fucking achievement deserves some credit. Anyway, so that's the World War II generation. You know, they had a lot going for them. They started out on the bottom, worked their way to the top, and left their kids with all the money and manufacturing base and pretty much opportunities you could ask for. Now, the big thing about the... Um, there's, two, there's two things in how it will relate to education in the future that we need to look at about the World War II generation. First off, they were much more... Um, they were much more of the gender norm generation. You know, they, they focused on, you know, men did X, women did Y. Right now, good or bad, that's just how it turned out. And something about the, the masculine tendencies was that men drifted towards trade. You know, getting the trade skills, like mechanic, right? You know, what's the staple about, you know, men know how to do cars, women don't? That saved over from a World War II generation mindset. You know, the guys actually did learn how to make cars because this is a marketable skill, right? Maybe they went on to be lawyers or doctors or what have you, but, you know, it's always good to know how to, you know, manually do things. And back in the World War II generation, um, you know, masculinity, femininity were treated with, you know, respect and blah, 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 gender roles being what they are. But the degree system was not the preferred method of gaining employment. In fact, it was the rarity when you met someone who, who walked around with a bachelor's degree. Quite the, 
contrast to the modern age where everyone seems to have a bachelor's degree. Now master's is what's cool. Pretty soon you're going to need a doctorate just to get into an interview. Um, now, now what... Now the thing about this is versus trades versus degrees. Trade skills are much more aligned with the free market, whereas degrees are much more aligned with statism. Now I know what you're going to say, I know what you're going to say. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Van Cap, host of, you know, The State Sucks. Doctors get degrees, and doctors will work in the free market, so ipso facto, you don't know what the hell you are babbling about, good sir. P.S. Love the shirt and your Steve Buscemi voice. Look, I get what you're saying. Okay, I understand there are exceptions to the rule, but here's what I mean by that. Trade skills are very difficult for the government to regulate and control. Degrees, on the other hand, as we've all seen over the decades, bread and butter of the state creating barriers to entry that you have to jump through in order to gain employment. Right? All these years to become a doctor, all these hoops to become a CPA. We have progressive credentialism, whereas what was the credentials 10 years ago? Ha <laughs> ha, now you gotta go to college for another two years. Right? So um, that's the thing with the degrees. With trade skills, the government has not had very much luck in regulating and controlling them. Although they've tried. You know, they, they try to force workmen's comp, they try to force people to join unions. You know, you have city ordinances, but the simple fact is, when you have a marketable skill that provides a very high demand good or service, welding, electrician, etc., there's plenty of opportunities both above board and under the table to make a good bit of money. So, short of you building a giant building and having to deal with city inspectors, uh, you're pretty much set if you have a trade skill on gaining employment, whether the state wants you to or not. And so that's the difference between the World War II generation and, and, and the generations to follow. So what happened? Right? What, what's the misstep here? What, how does any of this fit into education, you, you stylishly dressed gentleman? Well, when the World War II generation bowed out, uh, they, they left their kids in charge. And this is the baby boomer generation. And in my humble opinion, I think the baby boomer generation is probably the worst generation. And I say that as a millennial. And of course, as we all know, millennials are pretty fucking shitty. Right, so what do I mean by that? Well, they were given all this money, right? They were given um, this, this wealth, this opportunity, this manufacturing base, and in one generation, all but fucking obliterated it, right? They were the generation that went from, that, that abandoned reason as a primary focus and instead focused on their feels, right? You all know where the social justice warrior, you know, transgender, polyamorous, ponykin, special snowflakes we have today came from? The baby boomers, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to focus this solely on the educational lens, right? So the baby boomer generation, with regards to education, had a few had had some impacts, right? Had some meaningful landmarks. So you know how one of the big problems with education today is how teachers are so difficult to fire and how government is so involved in the educational process. Well, the increased legal protections for teachers, the, you know, the, the, the increased hardships of firing, the, um, the, um, oh, right, the pensions and the benefits and all that stuff, sorry, uh, came out through the baby boomer generation, right? They, they really got big on the loving of the teachers, you know, if, if you want to find the generation that decided to anoint public school teachers with sainthood, it was the baby boomer generation. Uh, and then, of course, during the baby boomer generation, you know, late, 70s, early 80s, you had the invention of the Department of Education, which, of course, brought the government down upon us all over the next uh, decades to come. Now, now that's pretty bad, right? We all, we've all seen the, the cataclysm of having so much government interference in education. I mean, my God, just look around. Uh, private school kids and homeschool kids outpace their public school counterparts by a fucking mile. But that's not all. That's not the only main, uh, that's not the only main problem here. With the baby boomer generation came the rise of second wave feminism. Now I know what you guys are saying. I know what you, got, you guys are saying, Mr. Ancap, we know you hate feminism, and you're perfectly right to because it has no business being in this wonderful anarcho-capitalist voluntarist community who values the NAP and individualism. I understand, but this is relevant to the educational aspect. Just hear me out. Now a lot of people ask these days, you know, about feminism. Why is it that feminists just want women at the top? Right? Why, why, does, why does feminism just want women to be the politicians and the lawyers and the CEOs, but not in the sewers or in the garbage? Well, that was much a product of the second wave feminists as part of the baby boomer narcissist persona. Right? The first wave feminists, who most will argue were the only real feminists, I personally say feminism was always female supremacist, first wave just had the benefit of dealing with real issues. 
Now, um, now, first white feminists didn't make a really big deal about female employment just at the top while ignoring the bottom. They just said, you know, they pushed for for women to, to be able to work, be treated as, you know, people, etc. Now, it wasn't until World War II, you know, the men were drafted off to go fight and die, and the women went into the, to the factory setting, that feminists got a real good look at the, how the grass was not always greener on the other side, and how the prospect of working at a job that has 90% mortality rates might not be so fucking fun. AKA in the factory settings. And piece of side note, you know that uh, that feminist poster, the feminist dream about and drool over, you know, the we can do it lady? She worked at a factory, quit after two weeks because she didn't want to hurt her hands. Right, so feminists got a real eye-opener with the factory thing. And so when, when baby boomers came up and second wave feminism rose with it, they decided to divert from that and instead focus the young women towards uh, higher education. Now, this is a very big distinction from what happened in the previous generations. As I said before, World War II generation was much more gender roles oriented, right? Uh, masculinity and femininity were not really glorified or demonized. People just did what was expected of them socially. Again, right or wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just spelling it out. What happened in second wave feminism and baby boomer generation is you had a glorification of femininity and you had a demonization of masculinity, right? Um... And again, just to add another side note here, rape culture was a, was, was a term that was made popular for, from second wave feminists, right? That's where that came from, and we're still living with that shit today. So again, this is where, this is worst generation ever. Now, what happened here was that, you know, um, women were being, you know, brought up, oh, you're smart, you need to go to school, you need to go to college, and you just, the career woman is the only woman. Of course, this is the same wave of feminism that really took a shovel to the back of the head of the stay-at-home mom side of femininity, and instead promoted this sort of, you know, femininity is, you know, anything you can do, I can do better to the men. And we see this in the educational system, right? The, the educational system over the, over the years has been geared far more towards female excellence and, uh, and a deterrent to male intellectualism. Like, I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a, girl, it's a, it's a school made by women for women, and men need to abandon that primitive masculinity if they want to succeed. That's the current educational mindset. Now, another reason that's problematic is the demonization of the, of the masculine traits, because as I informed you before about the World War II generation, what were the masculine traits? Well, men tended to go more towards the trades than they did towards getting degrees, right? Well, with the demonization of masculinity and the, and the women going to university and liking men who went to university, that's where the culture shifted, right? Feminism got the women going to university, and heterosexual men go where the women are, so that's where that went. Also, the demonization of men is what led society to tout university as better than the trades. Right? So that's what we get today. I mean, I don't think it's a tough sell to talk to all of you about, you know, uh, which one which one were you more incentivized to go to? Which one were you more, you know, instructed on? Going to become a welder or going to college? Going to become an electrician? Going to college. Right? I mean, I, in, in my own anecdotal experience, I only ever went was talked about the trades, we went out and we did this thing once, and that was in middle school. But from the moment I hit middle school to the moment I left high school, it was college, 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 college. Which college are you going to go to? Ooh, this, that, and the other. And the thing was, might, might just be me. I'm, I actually am 90% sure it's not just me. But uh, kids in our generations, my generation, the generation just before me, were sold this bill of goods about, you know, follow your heart and the money will follow thing. Like, going to college is just it's what you need to do. It doesn't really matter what you go for. Be a doctor, be a lawyer, be an accountant. Don't look at what the market demand is. Just go to college. It's what's important. And, of course, that's backfired on pretty much almost everyone who's taken that advice, unless they went to become, like, a doctor or a chemical engineer. You left with debt. You spent a decade before you could use your degree to actually work it off. It's completely loony, but this is the world we live in. Now, now... That's just the broad strokes of how we got here. So why, why is it society clings to this message? Right? Why is that? Well, it's because there's no way out of it now. Right? Our whole economy is bottlenecked. You got the baby boomers at the top who can't retire because they squandered all their fucking money. Right? So they have to work until they're dead when at first they thought, I paid into the system, gets my money, I want it now. Then, of course, you have Generation X, their children who are right behind them who can't move up because there's no real upward mobility. Right, they're stuck under their bosses, who they're pretty sure they're smarter than, but there you go. Then you have my generation who's stuck under them, fucking in the mailroom, can't get up anywhere because no one's moving up. 
Uh, and it's the same thing in the educational system. We have invented a university, an educational system that's a, an university system that is meant to feed itself, right? Um, so first off, let's look at elementary school. Elementary school is loved by two groups in particular, feminists and the state. Feminists like it, as I said before, women are awesome, boys are horrible, reinforce that for 12 years. And then you have the state. Now, state loves the current educational system, and I don't just mean the whole, uh, the, the subjects they're teaching. I'm talking they love the fact that kids get sequestered for eight hours a day, five days a week for 12 years of their lives at a state-run institution. They love it because it allows them greater access to propagandizing them to believe they need a state, they need nationalism. That's a big thing. To teach them their version of history. To browbeat them with so many subjects they're too damn tired and, you know, stressed out to filter out which is good, which is bad. So, that's, that's the elementary. And, of course, what we have today is elementary school is a little more than... Like, kids aren't really being taught. That needs to be made clear. Like, most of the subjects you're taught in elementary school, you don't need to be taught. Right? At, at best, you found subjects you gravitated towards and subjects you did not. Right? Me, personally, I liked math and I liked English. Those were the subjects I very much enjoyed. Those are the ones I remember the best. The books I read, the, the math classes I took. Things like um, science, for example, was not my forte. I had a very, like, I learned the bare, the bare bones of it, but anything in depth, I was just like, my brain just, he don't give a fuck. That's, there's probably a scientific answer, but, you know, why question the will of almighty science, you know? Um, so I spent years getting wasted on fucking science I'm never really going to be big with. And, any, and even today, I'm smarter at science from Google than I am public school because I'm able to Google and learn what I'm interested in which at the moment is quantum physics. The universe is very interesting, as it turns out, but public school teacher didn't give me that. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's the thing. Like, you know, you have economics, you have philosophy, you have languages, right? I mean, I'm doing a little French on the side. Admittedly, it's a hobby. It's not going anywhere quick, but, you know, I, I do it at my pace, and I, I like it. But most subjects, we don't really need to be taught, right? Uh, public school is a propaganda daycare center, so that the other tax livestock can go off and work for the state. That's the, that's the fundamental of what education is today. Now then we get to the fucking university system, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the creme de la creme. Right? It does have the female exceptionalism, male demonization, state propagandization, of course, all on steroids because it's a whole new level. But it has a lot more because it is where the industry is. Right? What is it? Like trillion dollars is spent on, on education of the kids right now? Right? Education. But um, the university is where they make bank because there is so much money being wasted. I mean, my God, they offer bachelor's degrees in puppeteering. Um, that's not even a joke. That's genuine. You can get a bachelor's. Who, why is this being offered? Right? Well, because the educational system is a business now. It is a big thing. You have the women's studies, right? What are you going to do with women's studies? You're going to get a women's studies degree, and what are you going to do? You're going to go on to teach women's studies. That is so fucking messed up. You get degrees so you can teach shit. You get degrees so you can teach shit. You get degrees so you can teach shit. You know what used to cause people to teach shit? Uh, they used to learn shit, and then when they got older and wanted to make some money on the side, they went and taught. Right? I, 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 I became a welder. You know, I welded for years. I'm a little older now, and now I'm going to teach you motherfuckers how to weld. That used to be the system. Right now you have people who go to college just to become teachers, to teach other people so they can go off to teach people in college. Blah, 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 blah. Of course, the trades get ignored. Right? I mean, that's, that's the funny thing is, I mean, maybe this wasn't for your generation, you know, people who are older, but for my generation, I mean, like, the, ba the Balkan oil fields open in, what, 2006? Takes a year to become a welder? Can run up there and get a job. Run up there and get a freaking job. That would be best advice. That'd be great advice. That's good money. I'm not playing with you on that. Um, but no, no one gets that. Everyone is told this, you know, um, follow your passions, money will follow. And of course, that's a baby boomer thing. They had all the money in the universe. They could play, they could play make believe for a long time before reality snapped back into place. Uh, and so, so you get a a generation propagandized. You get a generation in debt. And of course, the state can use that over people's heads. Hey, vote for me, and I will help you out with your student loan. <laughs> maybe I'll let you. Uh, maybe I'll forgive it. Maybe I'll relieve you a bit of that burden. <laughs> Right, so that gets to happen. The university system gets to make money by churning out people who just are going to keep going back to the university system. The state can tell businesses, 
right? They can say, hey, businesses, you need this and this and this if you want to hire people. They better have a bachelor's. They better have a master's. They better have a doctor. They better have all this stuff. And, of course, you get, you know, um, progressive credentialism. It's horrible, but that's the way it is. So that's just, that's the broad strokes of the educational system, right? And there just, there's just a lot of problems with it because, first off, it doesn't exist to teach. Uh, the biggest problem is, and this is the thing, because the baby boomers were so shitty with financial management, they're stuck in the market for a lot longer than they need to. Do you ever stop and wonder why we still have newspapers? You know, uh, I, I recently went and um, applied for a job at a call center. A call center. It's a building. There's electricity, cars parked in. It's a call center. You could do it from home. Think about the money you'd save. Hey, uh, I'm going to send you this list of numbers. you got to call them, blah, blah, blah. Email me your results, etc., etc., so on and so forth. You know, maybe record yourself while you do the call. Like, you know what I'm doing right now? Send me the footage. Okay, thanks. And so, you, I mean, I mean, look at the Voluntary Virtues Network as solid proof. Right now, I, I, I don't know what Michael Shanklin did behind the she scenes, but I guarantee most of the people he got on this show, he did not go visit personally. He sent them emails. He, you know, he chatted with them. He said, hey, here's a password. Here's an account. Here's your schedule. You do you. Now, he'll know whether or not we're doing our stuff. I mean, we're all right here to be viewed. Right, but why isn't the market embracing this technology? Well, for the same reason our infrastructure is all crappy everywhere, because we're stuck. Because you have the baby boomers up here who like things being done their way, and so long as they have the money, and fuck, how many of the baby boomers are still politicians? I mean, I know the state is evil and all, but baby boomers are, are terrible. So you got the baby boomers, you got their kids, and then you got the kids' kids. And you know what? I would not be at all shocked if the next generation's worse than the millennials. Wouldn't be at all shocked. They've spent way more time on social media, and the internet just makes things happen quicker, right? Technology, it doesn't alter society very much. It just gives them an extra tool. Society can use that tool like a shovel. It can use it to make work much easier, or it can bludgeon each other over the head with it, right? <clears throat> My generation uh, is, is over-emotional, special snowflakes, the true by byproducts of the baby boomers, but with Twitter. So we went from zero to crazy really fast. Generation right after mine... Way more social media. There's going to be a new level of crazy, folks. But yeah, so that's the that's the thing. There's plenty of markets. Even in education, there is no point why kids should be getting up and going to school eight hours a day at these buildings. I mean, there's only a handful of actual things you need to go somewhere to be taught. right? There's no reason why you should have to go to a school to learn philosophy or women's studies or, fuck, even languages. I mean, there's so much stuff you can do online. Even math. You can do math on... Uh, there's plenty of people who do math on YouTube, right? Um, like, short of doing something like... Something really hands-on, like maybe the trades or a doctor, chemical engineering, just something where you need someone over you to show you how to add this to that, blah, blah, blah. I can't... I mean, there's, there's just no point to it, right? This is the thing about people who ask, well, how will schools be handled in the free market? We wouldn't have public schools like we do today. It's a complete waste of time. You're, spent, you're using kids' gray matter to learn a handful of subjects they're not going to care about in the future instead of focusing them on their passions, right? I'm going to take a moment to, to recommend a, um, to recommend a uh, documentary about the, the Internet's own son, I believe it's called. Uh, it's about the, um, I think his, his name's Aaron Schwartz, the Internet activist. I mean, I'm going to recommend that to you guys to show that, you know, it's a it's a whole new world we have out there, right? The potential we really have if we stop being stuck in these antiquated, baby boomer, status-controlled systems, right? I mean, we just, we, 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 if, if, if the baby boomers had been, an, had been philosophical leaning instead of narcissistic leaning, we'd be ANCAPs today and at a, the closest thing to a, utopian-esque society we could be in about a generation. All the opportunity, all the wealth, it was right there and it was squandered and now we're falling under the jackboot of statism even further. And education is where they're really keeping us intellectually down, but we have this beautiful medium by which to exchange ideas and perceptions. So I hope you guys found my, um, I hope you guys found my educational video illuminating. I hope you found it good. Uh, please leave your you know, comments in the comment section. I do need ideas for shows every week, so please send me some ideas. Alright guys, take care.